Let's learn about data. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our second business meeting. You may remember our last special guest. Well, he is back again today to talk to us about interpreting data. Please welcome once again, Mr. Grafferson. Hello, hello, I am Mr. Grafferson. Today, we will be representing and interpreting data. We will be looking at data in frequency tables, line plots, and bar graphs. We will also be using those representations to answer questions and to solve problems. Let's look at the two types of data. We have numerical, which is made of numbers, and categorical, which is made of words. Let's look at some examples. Let's take age. If you take a survey and collect data about people's ages, you would have a list of numbers, so that would be numerical. For weight, you would also have a list of numbers, so that would be numerical again. For eye color, you would get a list of colors like brown, blue, and green, so that would be categorical. For shoe size, those would be numbers, so numerical. For gender, that would be male or female, so categorical. And for number of pets, that would also be numbers, so numerical. Let's start with frequency tables. Frequency tables take data and puts it into tables using tally marks to determine how many times a number appears in the data. Take this data set for example. We're looking at the number of peas in a pod. Let's place these numbers in the frequency table using tally marks. We have three, six, five, four, three, three, five, six, six, and four. Frequency tables are useful because they let us look at our table and in just a glance be able to tell which number appears most frequently or least frequently and gives us an idea of how often each number was seen. Now let's look at making a bar graph. So I see they've given us a table of favorite sports and they've given us the results of a survey for the number of students who chose each sport. So first we need a title and some labels. Then we need a scale. Since all of our numbers are multiples of 20, let's make our scale 20. Now let's make our bars. Basketball had 100 students, volleyball had 60, and tennis had 20. And there we have our bar graph. Line plots are next. Here we're looking at a list of number of text messages. So first, we want to use a number line that has those values on it and make sure we label and include a title. Next, we want to place an X on the number line for each value in the list. Well, don't just let the fun stop. Let's try a problem involving a line plot. The line plot shows the number of pets each student in Mr. Wynn's class has. The table is missing the information for the number of students who have two pets. The number of students who have two pets is double the number of students who have four pets. How many students have two or more pets? We know that the number of students who have two pets is double the number of students who have four pets. So since five students have four pets, the number that have two would be five times two, which equals 10. That means 10 students have two pets. Next, we want to add how many people have two, three, or four pets. So we would add 10 plus one plus five. We get a total of 16 students. Let's try this problem. The bar graph shows the number of cookies Sydney sold on three different days. How many more cookies did Sydney sell on Saturday than on Friday and Sunday combined? First, let's figure out how many cookies she sold each day. Let's check out the scale on this graph. It goes from 0 to 40. That means the line in the very middle of 0 and 40 must be 20. So our scale is going by 20s. That means Friday, Sydney sold 20 cookies. Saturday, she sold 100 cookies. And Sunday, she sold 60. So to figure out how many cookies Sydney sold on Friday and Sunday combined, it would be 20 plus 60, which equals 80. 
And since we want to know how many more cookies she sold on Saturday than both those days combined, we would subtract the 80 cookies from the 100 that she sold on Saturday. That would leave us with 20 cookies, which is our answer. Thank you for allowing me to teach you all about data. Have a great day.